Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm so glad to see you. Here's an envelope just for you. It's full of games and activities too. Let's see what we can do with an envelope or two. So if you've ever been to my workshops, I often do activities with an envelope and I show teachers all sorts of hands-on skill-based activities you can do with a simple envelope. So several weeks ago, I did this at a workshop and a teacher said, do you have all of those things written down? I thought, you know what, that's a good idea. So yesterday, today, and tomorrow, I have these activities on my uh, blog, but I'd also like to share with them them with you this evening. So, um, all you do is you get some envelopes and seal them and cut them in half. And you probably will need to do that for the children. And once you've got it cut in half, all you have to do is put your hand in here and you have a puppet. And one thing we know about children is they love puppets. They put their hand in something and all of a sudden it's alive and it's real. And so this is what I call a rabbit trap. So you've got something that they like, then how do you turn it into a learning activity? Well, after you read a story, you could let them do a puppet of their favorite character and then use it to retell the story with a friend. Um, so like, you know, you could do uh, fiction as well as nonfiction. So they could do a storybook character, or if you were doing a nonfiction book about animals, they could do that as well. You could use the puppet for nursery rhymes. It would be a great way to encourage some of your younger children to take the puppet home and say the nursery rhyme to your parents. And what I found with kids with puppets is you know, they'll just scribble something on here and you say, tell me about your puppet. And they'll say, it's a dog. And you go, great. Yeah, I mean, we think as a grown, as grown ups that things have to look like what they are. But for children, their imaginations are much better than ours. So whatever they do, if they tell you it's a dog or it's a dinosaur, whatever, it's fine. It's theirs. It's totally theirs. Um, another thing you can do with a puppet, um, you can use it to talk about feelings. So um, you could let them do a puppet and then um, let them use the puppet to talk about how they're feeling and why they're feeling that way. And then another thing that I thought would be really fun for some of the older kids would be to make puppets of some of their heroes or favorite characters. Um, it's a good way to even get younger children to start thinking about some heroes and some characters in our country and in our world. So puppets are great. Now another thing you can do with envelopes is um, if you cut off the corner, and I'm cutting off the sealed corner, not the open corner, but just trim off the corner a little bit and then you can let the children decorate it or whatever and you can use this like a bookmark and they can take their bookmark and they can put it on the top of their favorite page just like that and that will save their place for them. Now this is also good um, to get children to talk about books. So even younger children, they could look through a book and put their bookmark on their favorite page and then they could tell you why they like that page. Some of your older children with their little leveled readers, after they practice reading a book, they can put the bookmark on the page they wanna share with their classmates. Or you could even put a vocabulary word on the bookmark, and when they find the vocabulary word or the solution in the story, they can just mark it. So you can use these with younger children. You could use these with primary, middle school grade kids in different ways. So we used one end of the envelope for a puppet, and then we used it for a bookmark. If you cut a strip off like this, you will have a bracelet, a cuff bracelet. And you know, kids love hats, necklaces, bracelets, anything they can wear. And I, you hear me say this all the time. The world keeps changing, but children are the same. They liked these 45 years ago when I started teaching. They like them now. So they've got a bracelet. How do you turn that into a learning opportunity? Well, um, if you were working on shapes, you could let them do a shape bracelet. Uh, if you were working on words, you could let them do a sight word bracelet, words that they really need to work on and focus on. 
You could um, use this for writing numerals. You could use it for making a pattern. This is really good to send a note home to parents. Please remember to send your child's field permission or something like that. This is something parents will notice. Um, this is fun for holidays and seasons that you can make a holiday or seasonal bracelet. Um, you can let the children do an autograph bracelet, write each other's names, and at the beginning of the school year, this is a handy way to make sure the children get on the right bus that first day of school. Another puppet that you can make is a letter puppet. So whatever letter or sound you're working on, you put it on the puppet, and then you can use it to sing the Hokey Pokey song. You put your S in, you take your S out. You put your S in, and you shake it all about. You make the S sound, S, and then you put it down. See, this way, every child in your room is engaged. They're all busy. They're doing something. They're active. They're listening. And you can call out words like sun, and if you hear the sound, they can hold up their puppet. If it doesn't, if you don't say a word that starts with s, they keep their puppet down. Now, I know most of you know how to play the game, I have, who has. So, if you took 13 envelopes and cut them in half and wrote the letters on these, you could pass these out randomly and then play the game. I have A, who has B? I have B, who has C? And of course, you could do it for numbers as well. I have 11, who has 12? I have 12, who has 13? And uh, especially for some of the higher numbers, like you could start at a random place, like I have 23, who has 24, so different things to do. Uh, another math activity with your envelope is to make some shape puppets so they can take their shape puppet. If you have a square, stand up. If you have a circle, stand up. If you have a hexagon, stand up. If you have a rhomba, stand up and just call out different shapes and they can stand up. These are also really good for positional words. Can you put the circle on your head? Can you put it under your chin? Can you put it next to your ear? So different positional words. Or you could put the puppet someplace and who can tell me where the square is? Who can tell me where is square? And they would say on your shoulder. Now, sight words, another thing that you can do with the puppets, you write them on the sight words, and children can walk around the room, and they can high-five their friends, is, can, and they can high-five and read the words. They might even be able to put them together and make some sentences. Another standard that you can use these for is fact and opinion. So, uh, it feels good outside today. It is a sunny day. Uh, you can also use these. These would be really handy to keep in the children's desk for a quick review. So um, you can just use one envelope for this. On one side you write yes, and on the other side you write no, and the children put it on their hand. And a quick review, 7 plus 2 equals um, 9, and they would hold up yes. Tomorrow is Friday, no. So in any concept that you're working on. You can do yes, no. Um, another one, uh, question and statement. Today is Tuesday. What will tomorrow be? And they can hold up either a question mark or a period on the backs of the envelopes. Now, I don't want you to think, I think of all these things. When I do workshops and I pass these out, I say, who's got another idea? And teachers come up with amazing ideas for these things. So let me show you just a few more things that you might want to do with an envelope. Now you can make books out of envelopes. So um, your older children could write descriptions about themselves. I am six years old, I like soccer, my favorite color is orange, I have a fish. And then inside the envelope, um, you could let them draw their picture and write their name. You can also use envelopes to do like a question review, so they do study question reviews on the front, answer inside, or um, riddles. You write the riddle on the front and the answer inside, and I'm going to tell you my favorite riddle. It's the only riddle I know, the only riddle I can tell, so you probably heard me say it before. What kind of bears have no teeth? Gummy bears. If you cut the left end off the envelope 
and you write words on sentences, you can pull out one letter at a time. And so, like with the younger children, you might use their names and their pictures. So I'll pull out whose name could this be? Whose name could this be? And we pull out one letter at a time and then they get real excited because, oh, it's Lewis. You could also use this when you're teaching color words that they pull out one letter at a time and try to predict what the color could be. And then there's the little picture clue at the end. Or you could add, also use this for addition and subtraction facts that they seven minus three equals, and they say the answer, and then they confirm and self-check to make sure they're right. And um, just one other thing to do with an envelope, and I'll show you how to do this because it makes it um, a little bit handier when you do this. So I've got half an envelope, and if I just cut down about an inch or so on each side, and then I can fold the forward down, the top front piece down, it makes a nice little pocket. And they can use this little pocket to um, store math facts that they might be working on, or maybe letters that they're working on, or sight words, or numbers. So this can be very skill-based and individualized um, to help the children with those things. So. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you got at least one or two activities that you can do with envelopes this coming week. And I think, you know, variety is the spice of life. And variety is also critical in the classroom. You just can't keep giving out plain paper every day. You got to come up with new tricks and new gimmicks that will help the children. So these are all very open-ended. And I see all these little things popping up now, and, and I'm about through. So um, I will definitely put this up on Facebook so you can watch it again. I'm going to be in Texas this coming uh, week for the Texas Kindergarten Conference, and then I'll be in Omaha, and then I'm going to be in Cincinnati, so I've got some exciting places coming up, and um, I look forward to seeing you, and if I don't get to see you at a conference, you know I'll be back Facebook Live, and we can still be besties, and I have stuff on my blog every day, too, so take care, God bless, and I hope you found something good in your envelope today.